Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. This is a roundabout quilt. It has a big round pattern that shows when you spread it out. So the quilt has a big secondary pattern, but I was playing around with just the block the other day. And I think I've come up with a really nice project that will make four placemats and a matching table runner. All we need is a light fabric, a dark fabric, and a little accent fabric. I think this fabric will work really well. It's dark, but it's got a little bit of a lot of multicolored going on. I need a light one that goes with it. This one would be nice. Then I need something that will give it a little pop for an accent. So this one will be perfect. It's got some of the same colors, but it's a little bit darker and I think that will be great. So grab your three fabrics and let's get started. All we need is one yard of a darker print, one yard of the lighter print, and half a yard of the accent. So I'm gonna cut those off and get them ironed up nice and flat. Now the dark and the light yard pieces are gonna get cut exactly the same, so I'm going to cut them at the same time. I need three pieces at five inches, cut the whole width of the fabric here, and you don't have to remember these numbers. This will be a free pattern on our website. You'll notice I'm using the weight, and that's just to help hold down my ruler there so that nothing will move while I'm cutting. Now we need one strip at three and a half inches wide. And then the rest of this fabric we will put aside because we're gonna use it later for some borders. Now I'm going to work with the five inch strip. So I'm just gonna turn my board sideways here, slide these up just a little bit. And I'm going to use a 45 degree ruler. I like this ruler from Creative Grids. This Kaleido ruler will also work. Any of these will work as long as they've got a 45 degree angle here. So we are going to put the five inch line here right on our cut line. And I'm kind of near my selvages, but I've got enough space there and I'm gonna make my first cut. Now we are going to be cutting these wedges and the easiest way to do it is to pick this up and turn it around and Put that ruler back right where it was, and then cut on this side here. Now we're going to turn the ruler around, put it on this bottom edge, line everything up, and cut. So just keep cutting the whole strip. All the wedges are cut. Now I'm gonna just spin this around. And this three and a half inch strip is going to get cut into three and a half inch squares. And then we're going to cut each square into triangles. So here's my three and a half inch square. And then, oops, I'm gonna take this stack, turn it a little bit and just cut it from corner to corner right on the diagonal. And do that for the whole row here. Now this is all we need to make all the blocks. So I'm just going to take these all over to the machine, start stitching them up. For one block, we need four of the light wedges, and then we're gonna put the dark wedges right on top of them, right sides together, and I'm going to line up the sides and stitch down one side using a quarter inch seam. I'm gonna leave it right on the machine and I'm gonna chain piece these four pair. Now 
Now we want to open these up and finger press the seam allowance toward the dark fabric. Try not to stretch it, but just press that seam open, either with your fingernail or with the pad of your finger. Now turn one of these over onto each of these other guys here. So we're taking, we're making half a block here. So I'm just lining up this side now, and these seam allowances will nest here. They're meeting right in the middle, and they're going opposite directions, making it really easy to have that intersection match. And we'll do the other one at the same time here, matching it up. You can feel it. It's real easy to feel if those seams are butting up there. Again, finger press toward the dark fabric. Now we've got two halves here, and we are just going to put these together, right sides, and I like to start sewing at the tip here a little bit. And once I've got that anchored down, I'm going to match the middle here. So you can open them up and see if they match. You can also take a pin and stick it in right at that intersection, right where all those pieces come together, and then take that pin and point it over here where they come together, and then just slide that right down there, and they will be perfectly matched. And I just hold the pin here as I sew. And right before I get to the pin, I take it out. Now let's see how close we were to matching that center. It's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch up all the rest of the blocks and get this ironed nice and flat. Once you have them steamed nice and flat, grab the corners and we'll get these stitched on. Now for the table runner, we're going to take three of these blocks and we are going to put dark triangles onto the light wedges. So I'm going to do four of these dark triangles onto each of these wedges. Now I'm going to line it up. Now when I say line it up, what I mean is this. The raw edges over here are going to match. And the amount of extra tip there is going to be the same as the amount of the extra tip here. Also, this point here will be right in the middle. So for instance, if I line it up here, I'm going to have way more up there than down here. So use all of those things. You can just use your eye. You don't have to measure or anything. But get the edge nice and even and have the same showing here as there. Then use your quarter inch seam allowance. Now, when we open this up and finger press it, you can see, see it's making a nice square corner here. And we're going to trim these guys off. So let me put the other corners on here. Now we're going to trim those dog ears off. So we want this to be nine and a half inches. And it's pretty darn close here. So I can just line this up on the edge and slice these off with my blade. You can use scissors if you prefer, but just cut it nice and straight and get those dog ears off. That'll make the quilt or the table runner be less bulky where all these seams come together here. Now make three blocks exactly like this. I have all of this block done, all three of them. Now we're going to make same similar block, but we're going to put light corner triangles onto the dark wedges here. So we're going to use four of these and put them on the dark wedges. Now these light corner blocks just fit right in here and I'm going to sew this into one long row. So just use a quarter inch seam. Just going to flip these over like this and 
the corners or the intersections here, they will match up real easily because we trimmed all our blocks to exactly the same size. All right, it's nice and flat. Now we are going to cut some skinny pieces of our accent border here. So these are going to be cut at one and a quarter inches. So I'm gonna use my weight so I can get these nice and accurate. Now I have four strips. I'm going to cut two short pieces off of here that are nine and a half inches long. And those will fit on the two short ends of the runner. Then I'm gonna take the rest of the fabric the rest of those skinny borders and sew them into one long piece and put that onto the long sides of the runner. Now on really narrow borders like this, it's really important to use a very accurate seam allowance because if you're off an eighth of an inch, that's a rather large percentage of this border. So I try to go really slow and careful on skinny borders so they will look straight. Now we're gonna cut the outside border and this is going to be cut at two inches. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna cut four strips and then cut short ones for the short end of the runner and then stitch the rest into long pieces and stitch those on the long sides. The runner top is all done. Now we need to make the placemat tops. So we're taking our four extra blocks. Two of them have dark corners, two of them have light corners, and we're gonna frame all of them with the one and a quarter inch accent. Then we're gonna do a two inch border just on the side so we can make them rectangular. Then we're gonna finish up with this outside border, two inches on the sides, three inches on the top. And you don't have to worry about remembering those numbers. We have a free pattern on the website so you can just refer to that. Now, I cut my borders exactly the right size for what they were supposed to be. But you can see here, it's a little bit too long, and that's because I have a tendency to make my patchwork seams slightly bigger than a quarter inch. And that's okay. Just leave the excess there and trim it off. Don't try to stretch your block to make it fit the border. Your patchwork will lay much flatter if you just stitch it on and trim off that teeny bit of extra. So there's the first placemat top. I'm gonna to go ahead and stitch the other three up and then get them steam pressed nice and flat. I've got all four placemat tops done. Now I'm gonna use what's called a flip finish on these. I'm not gonna use binding. And when we use the flip finish, we don't need very much fabric for the back. So if I get a yard and a half, which is a little bit longer than my runner, I can get the back of the runner and all four placemats from that one piece of fabric. So this is my yard and a half. I've ironed it nice and flat. I opened it up and I ironed that crease that comes on the bolt. So here's the selvages. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to refold it in the other direction. Fold it enough so you can get it on your cutting table. Now I'm just basically going to cut it into thirds. One third will be the runner back, and then from the other two thirds, I'll be able to get two placemat backs from each section. So here is the runner back. One long piece for the runner back, and then I can get two placemats from each of these pieces. Because we're doing a flip finish, and we don't have to put it on the long arm or anything, we don't need quite as much extra backing, so that works out great. It saves us a lot of fabric. I have a piece of scrap batting here. I like to use the same batting that I use in quilts, which is generally the Hobbs, 80% cotton, 20% polyester. So batting, then backing, then take your placemat top and put it right sides down and smooth it out and just put a couple of pins in around the edges. Now I'm going to stitch everything front to back. I'm going to start right here and I'm gonna back tack. I'm using a quarter inch seam, but I'm gonna back tack because that's where the opening is going to be and we don't want those stitches to pull out. So I'm pivoting at all the corners. And when I get near where I started stitching, 
I want to leave an opening that's big enough for my hand to fit in. So I'm going to stitch to right about here, then back tack a little bit. Now I'm just going to trim off the excess backing and batting. And then I'm going to trim a little bit off of these corners too. So I'm trimming close to my stitching there. Now we're just going to reach between the top and the back and we are going to flip it right side out. Then put one hand back in and poke out the corners. So I like to poke it out with my fingernail a little bit and then hand press it so it stays nice and flat. Now just hand press it, just smash everything nice and flat and then flip it over and do the same thing from the back side, making sure that you Press it with your hands right along the edges. Now here's the opening there. You can just turn that in with your fingers a little bit and then just give it a little squish there. Hold it tight this way, put it under the machine. And we are going to edge stitch all the way around the edge of the placemat. And that will get that opening closed at the same time. So I'm about an eighth of an inch from the edge. Now this edge stitching, you'll notice I'm doing it from the back side. And for some reason, I don't know the theory behind it, it's just way easier to get this stitched neatly from the back side. Now we're going to flip it over to quilt it, and I'm going to stitch in the ditch. So I'm going to put a couple of pins in the corners of the block here, and maybe in the center of the block, and then I'll show you how to stitch it. The first thing I'm going to do is go around the circle shape here. So to stitch in the ditch, you want to have your needle right in the ditch if you can. And it's a little bit tricky, but we also like to call this stitching near the ditch. Because when you're done, if it's moved over a little bit, it's really not going to show. I'm not going to hit every seam, but I'm going to go around the circle and I'm going to go between the wedges and the table runner is going to get quilted exactly the same way. So I'm going to go ahead and finish everything up then I'll show you what they look like. I'm really happy with how the placemats and runner turned out. The runner's about 49 inches long and then we've got two of these placemats with the light corners, two of them with the dark corners. So that will look really nice on the table. Only took a yard of the dark, a yard of the light, half a yard of that accent. Now the accent, it just pops a little, just makes a really nice frame. Just a very nice, fun, quick project. Thanks for watching our tutorial today. And remember, you don't have to worry about writing down all the sizes because we have this as a free pattern on our website. Now, for any of you who are interested, we're having a giveaway. We're giving away this big, blue quilt here. This is made from Moda fabrics. It's in the log cabin pattern, great big blocks, and it's very easy to enter the giveaway. Just click that link that says giveaway and enter your name and email address. Also, if you want to be sure you don't miss any of our videos, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy quilting!